that. There you go. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, everybody. Uh, Welcome to our fourth and final uh, Hangout here on Google Plus for, for Yale admissions. Uh, we're having a bit of technical difficulties right now. Some of our, our um, representatives on Windows computers are having a little trouble getting in. Uh, so they'll join us as soon as they possibly can. And we'll go ahead and get started right now. Let's take a look at our Q&A right here. The first question we see is, oh, OK. What is the most important factor of your choice in Yale? I think that's. Uh, very good question to start one. with. Yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Michelle, do you want to take that one first, or I can do it for you? Sure, go ahead. So my name is Michelle. I'm a senior now, which is really sad because I'm graduating in about three weeks or so. So upset about this. Um, but I'm an English major, and I'm originally from Los Angeles, California. Um, so this question got asked quite a lot during Bulldog Days, just people telling me different things and wondering. I mean, you guys all have great options. So honestly, for me, the most important thing to consider as an undergraduate is what school is really going to give you the most resources as an undergrad as opposed to at the graduate level. So I'm sure you guys know like Harvard, Princeton, Yale all have amazing graduate programs and are making research facilities. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that will always be the best undergraduate experience. So at least in my own experience, the place, the deciding factor was like, what can I do as a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior? here as opposed to anywhere else. So I think for me it's been like studying abroad, getting paid to do that, having a bunch of jobs, being able to like hang out with professors and like really having the school support that, which has really became the deciding factor. There's there's an immense amount of focus on the undergraduate experience that I think is just not comparable anywhere else. Yeah, I totally agree. And I should have introduced myself at first. <laughs> Introducing yourself. Uh, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm also an English major and also a senior <laughs> here at Yale. Uh, it's, it's sad. <laughs> that we're, both, uh, we're both in the same major here, same year. And, and yeah, it is a little bit sad that we're uh, starting to wrap up our time here. I just had my last class at Yale about uh, on, was it Thursday? Uh, and it was a really good way to wrap up. And I think the, the professor actually, um, in his attempt to, to really sum up everything that he wanted to say in his entire seminar, um, actually made a lot of good points about why being at Yale is so fantastic. And I think a huge part of it is that the professors are right there and involved in the students' um, education on a one-on-one -on -one level. They're there not just teaching a lecture or in a seminar. Uh, they're, they're accessible and want to reach out to the students in an amazing way. And another part is the liberal arts experience. Which, you know, that doesn't mean that you have to study you know, a liberal arts or humanities style um, subject, but it does, it does mean that that part of the, the goal here is for students to be able to uh, gain meaning from or find meaning in the things that they're studying and apply that to, to further knowledge. And I think that's one of the most important parts the, that the professors really understand. And the best way to do that is to get to know the students. So having a faculty here at Yale across the board who want to get to know the students is a huge part of, uh, of what made Yale so important to me because it is so undergraduate centric no matter what your department. I mean, you have a six to one student to faculty ratio in the humanities, or sorry, at Yale, Yale College as the whole, uh, three to one in the sciences and one to one in engineering. And that's not because there's a lack of students, it's just because Yale has so many uh, amazing faculty members, teachers, um, and researchers who want to come here and do their, do their science, do their research, and they're, and they're working with students on a one-on-one -on -one level. It's amazing. Um, so yeah, that, is, that was, for me, a huge part about choosing Yale. Let's see, should we move on to the next question? I hope, I hope Jada, that that answers your question pretty well. Um, let's see, the next one here is, OK, this is Julia's question. OK, what makes Yale a good place to study architecture on the undergraduate level? Well, uh, I'm not an architecture major. And I don't know, Michelle, if you can answer this question any better than I can. But I'll take a shot at it, um, which is, uh, I know I have actually a huge chunk of my friends are architecture majors. I don't know how that happened, but it's pretty cool to see them go through the four years as architecture majors, figure out why they love it and what their interest is in. If it's in like really airy open spaces or if they love kind of just the, the artistry of design um, and how they apply that. I mean, one of my best friends is an architecture major and took that work that he did and used it to create a beautiful tree house in the Yale forest. Yale actually owns a forest. Isn't that cool? Um, and he took, uh, he took, he got special funding, a fellowship, and the support of all the faculty to do this project all on his own. Um, and the summer after he graduated, he went out to this forest 
and uh, and built this amazing treehouse. And it's a beautiful. It was a beautiful uh, coming together of his studies of my friends who were also in the humanities, and uh, and so he was able to take that and apply it to something in the real world with funding from Yale and from the outside, which was pretty pretty phenomenal. Um, I don't know, Michelle. Do you do you know anything more about the um, architecture major? Yeah, the only things I really know is that um. It's a pretty small major, and one of the big benefits of doing it at Yale is that you're right next to the School of Architecture. Mm -hmm. So a lot of there's like a lot of cross-listed graduate programs, and you have access to all the um, sort of facilities because, of course, as an architecture major, a lot of it's just doing artwork and doing designs. So they have actually like state-of-the-art um, labs or sort of areas where you can work on that, which is really really sweet. So I know there's a lot of collaboration between undergraduate and the graduate level so that's that's a great opportunity I think in terms of architecture and major in general it's just it's a small major so I, I get the sense that you get a lot of personal attention which is very beneficial yeah it's one of the fantastic parts and I think um, another huge part is that you know it is theoretical um, and there's there's that undergraduate liberal arts kind of feel here where it's all about kind of learning um, how to learn about the, sub the subject you want to you want to focus on, but they also do a lot of practical stuff, which I think is really cool. Not every major really applies so practically, where they're doing CAD work and they're actually, um, um, you know, learning the basics of how to build a building, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, a lot of people will take that and move on, whether they're doing like set building for theater design or for movies, or they're doing uh, other stuff with actual uh, architecture out in the real world. It's pretty cool what they can apply with that. Well, Julia, I hope we've answered your question about architecture. Um, we can, if you want, you can email uh, the admissions office and we can put you in touch with an architecture major as well uh, to see if they can answer more of your questions. Or you can check out the architecture department as well and contact them. All right, let's see the next question. Okay, here we go. From Emily Ling, to any computer science slash engineering majors. Well, we're English majors, but we'll do our best here. Uh, we'll see if we can get our other guys online soon. Uh, how do the opportunities at Yale compare to more engineering-focused schools like Stanford and MIT, and have you ever felt disadvantaged as an engineer slash computer science scientist from Yale? Okay, so like I said, we're both English majors here, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be able, I think we can talk from the experiences that our friends have had, um, and I certainly can say that the opportunities here, like I talked about a few minutes ago, the student-faculty ratio is really fantastic. Like six to one in Yale College, for those of you who are new here, uh, new to the broadcast, welcome, first of all. Um, what I was saying, six to one on uh, uh, the Yale College student-to-faculty ratio, in the sciences, three to one, and in engineering, one to one. Um, and like I said, that's not because of a lack of students interested in the department. It actually comes from uh, Yale. If you, you may know that Yale was planning to build two new residential colleges. Those plans were put on hold uh, from the economic recession that hit a few years ago, but Yale still had hired um, tons of new professors that, to teach these new students who we were going to be coming in to fill the new colleges. And uh, so the advantage is for Yale students now that we actually get a ton of professors. We get this one-on-one -on -one experience and no matter uh, what department you're interested in, especially the sciences and humanities. So that's one of the really cool things about, um, about being involved, or sciences, sorry, and engineering. So that's one of the cool things about being involved in engineering and computer science here at Yale. Um, I can also say that my sister, she is a junior here at Yale, um, so I'm, I'm going to brag about her for a second, but she's a computer science major, and she'll be working for Google this summer, and uh, it's, it's just amazing the amount of work that she's doing. She's been able to combine her love of music and the arts uh, with her computer science major, doing uh, robotics work and education with languages, going into local schools and working with students who are bilingual to figure out what kind of language learning and teaching can happen from robots, what, what computers can help to do uh, with that algorithmic learning and that kind of thing, how we can apply that to the real world and help students learn as well. Um, so that's a bit of a perspective on computer science and engineering. I hope that gives you a good idea. I don't know, Michelle, if you can, you can chime in as well. <laughs> I think the only real big thing I have to say is, again, one of the big benefits about going to a place like Yale is that you don't have to be set on one thing and you can kind of give yourself some room to explore and I think particularly at Yale because our engineering department is not so big there's a lot of personal attention and there's a lot of focus on like if you want to talk to your DUS, your department of undergraduate research basically the head person in terms of the department you can very easily get them to help you kind of figure out how to double major and figure out how to do multiple courses in addition to your engineering courses. So it gives you a lot more leeway in terms of exploring different interests and being able to combine different majors. And I think that's something that's really important. 
Also, one of the things I'm really impressed by and just really jealous of is all the facilities that have come from this money that Yale has invested in science engineering. One of the most awesome things that we have on campus is the Center for um, Engineering and Innovative Design, which is essentially just like a play space for you to kind of create whatever you want. You don't have to be an engineering major, but it definitely helps if you want to, because then you can kind of use the 3D printers and all that for you to for you to make whatever you like and work on whatever projects we want whenever you want. And of course, this is all accessible to everybody, but of course there's an added benefit. If you're an engineering major, you can go there all the time, it becomes your study space, and there really are like beautiful, beautiful facilities that they've created within the last five years or so, just for that. Cool. Thanks, Michelle. And I think, John, can you hear us? Hi there, can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can yeah. hear you. Great. Oh, well, welcome, John. I think no. we've, got, we've got a couple more people here, and maybe Mitchell will be able to switch uh, and join us soon. So, um, well, welcome, John. Do you want yeah, to definitely. introduce yourself? Hey, guys. Sorry for the for the late add-in. I was having some technical difficulties with my personal computer, but um, that's all sorted out. My name's John. I'm an assistant director of admissions here, um, as well as a member of the Yale class of 2013. So I had the distinct honor of reading some of your applications to Yale College. Um, it's been an incredible first year as an admissions officer, um, and I hope that everyone that was able to make it to Bulldog Days really enjoyed their time. Um, and hopefully in this final kind of student um, virtual forum, we'll be able to answer some last minute questions that you guys have. But it seems like Michael and Michelle are already taking good care of you, so I don't want to interrupt the, your, your train of thought, Michael. No, not at all. We're actually, uh, we've just kind of covered the first three questions we've gotten. There's actually uh, no remaining questions at the moment. So for our 10 viewers that we see out here, um, if you guys have any questions, any pressing questions, please don't be afraid to ask questions and just put whatever you might be wondering about in that Q&A box, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Right. One of the things that I think um, was, was so, so great about Bulldog Days, um, and that I heard from all of the, the students that were visiting, was the constant discussion of, oh, um, is this what Yale re is really like? You know, all the excitement of the, the welcome showcase and the extracurricular bazaar and the academic fair. Um, and as a recent grad, I can tell you um, it, that it definitely is the case. But maybe Michelle and Michael can kind of elaborate on that. So, so one of the questions that I actually got from a lot of my admitted students personally was, is Yale continually this exciting? Is it this enriching? Is there always this much going on? Oh, my gosh. Uh, Bulldog days. <laughs> is a crazy three days. Um, it definitely is a period where everybody shows the kind of amazing stuff that they're doing here at Yale. Um, and people ask, yeah, is, is there so much going on? Well, maybe it may, may not be happening in a three-hour time span in a gymnasium with all the tables set up uh, for over 500 registered undergraduate organizations. But they're all doing stuff every single day. I mean, ev in a given semester, there are anywhere from 60 to 100 theater productions. And that's not counting concerts. That's not counting uh, dance shows. That's just kind of theater kind of stuff, which is just incredible. So if you take that and apply that everywhere else, you look at all the posters that students are putting up. If you go to YaleStation.yale.edu, um, you can see all of these amazing activities that people are advertising uh, throughout the, the past couple of months here. And it's just incredible the volume of things that Yale has put on. 5,000 students here, and there's something for every single person to do pretty much every hour of any evening. Uh, and it really is, that volume does continue every single day here at Yale. Um, but everybody's just so productive and dedicated to the work that they do. Uh, that, that is something they're very excited about. Yeah, how about you, Michelle? What do you think? Yeah, sorry, I just like knocked over my lamp and got really distracted. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, in terms, of, I will admit that Bulldog Days is definitely a little bit of Yale on steroids. But that being said, I like had this discussion with a good friend of mine. They were like, why don't we just kind of bombard them? Well, I think the, the real sense is to get a really good sense of all the different things that can be happening at once. Um, that being said, after Bulldog Days, the next following three days, I was still running around from place to place, meeting friends and going to their shows. So it's definitely a very, very active culture. I would say most of the student organizations that you decide to join meet at least once a week, if not twice. And sometimes a lot of those things will be like once to get things hammered out for the week or the semester, and then the second time just to socialize and catch up. So definitely you'll be running around from things, from different things all the time. It's a very dynamic campus, and it's a very good opportunity to just kind of like figure out and kind of see what different things are happening. Right, certainly. Um, I'm looking at the question box, and because I came in late, Michael and Michelle, did you guys already answer Julia's question about um, architecture here? Or? 
You did, okay. And how about um, Jada's question? I believe she's asking, what is the most important factor of your choice in choosing Yale? So essentially, um, what were what was your reasoning for choosing Yale? Have you guys answered that yet? Or Yeah. <laughs> we did, but if you want to talk about it, John. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, sir, I'm obviously biased as an admissions <laughs> officer. Um, I, I, I have to be straightforward with that. Um, especially as an admissions officer that recently graduated and chose to stick around. Um, but I think I'm going to actually rephrase that question so it's more applicable to, to all of you. So obviously the most important factor for why I chose Yale was very personal for me. But I think the broader question in general that you all should be asking yourselves is um, not only is this a place where I a lot of my needs will be met in terms of uh, a residential community, in terms of resources, in terms of academics, but I think it's really important to answer this question for you. You know, is this going to be a place where I can continue to grow as, in, in four years? You know, um, it, it may seem a little a little daunting now, but but you're going to grow in so many ways that you never thought you would in college, and you want to make sure that you're you're attending school in a place that is giving you the support, the community kind of all, all the resources necessary for, yes, you to succeed academically, socially, and extracurricularly, but perhaps more importantly, is this a place where you, you can see yourself taking root for four years and really growing as a human being? Um, and a lot of different things go into that. Um, but I know for myself, personally, as a recent alum, um, as soon as I, I first started interacting with Yale, um, and continued through my Yale career, I realized that everyone here on campus was someone that had their priorities set in the way that I, you know, wanted to set my priorities. Um, and that was, yes, of course, enriching myself academically and extracurricularly, but furthermore, and kind of more importantly in my book, um, really understanding that for other people to succeed, um, you don't have to fail, and vice versa. You know, if you want to succeed, other people don't have to fail. It's this idea of really working together in a very resource-rich community to achieve your goals collectively. Um, and I really got that sense from, from Yale when I was a prospective student. Um, so kind of posing that question to, to Michael and Michelle, um, what about kind of Yale um, attracted you to the idea of being here for not just freshman year, not just sophomore year, but, you know, for four years as a student? Um, I can definitely talk about, um, for me, a huge part was the residential colleges. Um, I actually just came from the senior dinner for Timothy Dwight College, which was a huge emotional event. All of the senior class got together, the master of the college spoke, and the dean of the college spoke. And one of the big through, through themes that we had for the evening was about the community that the colleges had. These residential colleges are brought up again and again, not just by the students, but by the administration. This is where a lot of the learning and a lot of the knowledge um, being forwarded happens here in the college, not just in the classrooms, not just in the offices and labs, but in our common rooms, literally the, the rooms that we live in and we spend time with our, with our sweet mates. John was talking about how this is a place where uh, people support each other, where, where you can succeed with everybody else succeeding. And that's one of the really cool parts about the residential colleges. They really help make that happen because these are chance meetings. These are people who are interested in all sorts of different things and they want to help each other uh, learn. And the colleges are really uh, engineered to make that happen uh, with the, uh, the family and the community that the master and the dean build as, as well as the faculty advisors who are, affili are affiliated with the college. They live, uh, many of them live in the dining halls and many even more of them, or sorry, live in the colleges and many more of them will eat in the dining halls with the students and that's one of the greatest things about having that kind of interchange between the faculty and the students is that it, this is a place where we live and learn together and we learn from each other and, and I think over four years that's super important to have that community where you know you can can learn from people and also inadvertently teach people along the way from the things that you've you've gained uh, as the student and we all become teachers and students along the way. Right. How about you Michelle? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Can you guys hear me? Perfect. So one of the other things, I mean, if you're looking for even more community, one of the wonderful things that Yale has to offer that is very unique to Yale are the different cultural centers. And definitely I've built a lot of my life and a lot of my extracurriculars and a lot of the work opportunities I do around La Casa Cultural because it was really important for me to have a space where I could do all the things I could do at residential college but also have a, have a sort of space to share my culture and be able to experience and really dive into those issues in a way that was very productive and helpful for me. So Yale benefits from the fact that it's the only Ivy League college that has a Latino cultural center, a Jewish life cultural center, 
African American Cultural Center, an Asian American Cultural Center, and we just recently got a Native American Cultural Center. And if you guys are interested, you can actually look on the Yale like news website, and they just featured a video that the admissions office put together um, called A Place Called Home that is about all these different centers. So definitely this is one of the things that affected my decision because I grew up in Los Angeles with a lot of Mexican um, immigrants, and so it was really crucial to my identity formation, who I thought I was, and the issues I cared about. So obviously I wanted to kind of continue those things while immersing myself in a new community. I wanted like a little nice place that was very similar to what my home was back home as well. So again, community on top of community. If you, for whatever reason, don't click with residential college, you can always find more spaces and more avenues through the cultural centers as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that idea of community is, is what Michael touched on, what Michelle just so eloquently touched on, and, and what I kind of started this discussion about, you know, community means something different to so many people. Um, and at the end of the day, um, regardless of the academic and extracurricular and social successes you're having, um, what makes them so, so enjoyable in a college setting, especially here at Yale, is the fact that you have these communities, these groups of people with which you're able to really enjoy those experiences. And how, however you define community, you know, be it the city, the population of New Haven, be it a cultural center, be it a residential college, be it an acapella group. You know, Michael Protasio and I were actually in the same acapella group as undergraduates, and that was a community for us. I think Yale really prioritizes this idea of community, however you define it which makes your undergraduate experience not only personally successful, but successful in a way that is relating to everyone else around you. Yeah. I see we have a new question, actually, here from Julia. Um, Julia says, I loved Bulldog Days. The people were so kind, enthusiastic. Well, thank you. Um, and to the question, what does the city of New Haven offer in terms of culture um, and job slash internship opportunities? So I think there's kind of two questions going on there. Let's start by talking about the, the culture of New Haven, you know? As a medium-sized city here on the East Coast, what kind of culture does New Haven have? Michael? Yeah, so for me, one of the biggest parts about being in New Haven uh, was, or going to Yale, was was having this city, this accessible, what I like to call a fun-sized city, uh, to be to be living in and be a part of in my four years here at Yale. Uh, this is a place uh, where there's amazing culture. This is where it, it, one of the theaters, um, that send shows to Broadway. This is where that happens. Uh, there's the Yale Repertory Theater, the Schubert Theater. This is a place for amazing uh, theatrical culture. It's a place for amazing art. New Haven uh, and Yale have amazing partnerships with their art collections. For example, the Peabody Museum and the um, Yale University Gallery of Art and the British Art Gallery. All of these places are free and open to the public and they're part of the, uh, the New Haven culture. Yale is really embedded in New Haven uh, and it, it is a kind of a mutual exchange of culture from the students to the community and it's really a beautiful thing. There's also parts of the community that are a little further away from campus, just a couple of blocks, uh, but they really are a beautiful kind of New England community and that culture is also a huge part of it too. People will go to Worcester Square for the farmer's market. Yale Farm will have its own produce there. These are, this is a farm run by students and they'll, they'll harvest their, their produce and bring it to the market and people can purchase that and they're, they're really part of that community. So I think the culture that we have here is one of sharing, it's one of mutual support and it only gets better every single year and it's, it's really been a beautiful thing for me to see over my four years here. Yeah, how about you Michelle, what do you think? I, I really love New Haven and I feel really silly for a kind of like I think it's very easy in your first year that you're just kind of overwhelmed with things happening as a freshman and all these activities and all the things that you want to do that you don't get to see New Haven. But especially within my last three years, I've done a lot more exploring. And like I said, one of the things I really, really love about New Haven is that there are a lot of opportunities to engage with the community in a very meaningful way. I've been involved with um, the Mecha de Yale, which is a social justice organization um, out of La Casa, and they have affiliation with Unidad Latina en Acción, which is a Hispanic kind of workers' rights organization, and it's been wonderful because there's not many opportunities, I think, at a lot of other schools to really do meaningful engagement and work on working and collaborating with the community that exists and existing networks and existing issues that they care about. So for me, it's been a very productive thing. There's a very rich and vibrant um, Hispanic community, which of course is very important for me. And one of my favorite events of all year is they have like the very, like, fantastic, colorful Dia de los Muertos parade in Fairhaven. And I've been to that about two years in a row. They have May Day protests, stuff like that. So those are things that are kind of on the political side of it. But even if you're not into that, I also just spend so much time in New Haven. My friends are always kind of like, why are you walking so far away? But, for example, just yesterday, or just two days ago, was the 
Cherry Blossom Festival at Worcester Square, and they throw on this like big elaborate um, festival for the cherry blossoms that are all blooming there. And there were just so many families out, and so many dogs. I'm such a sucker for dogs, so like that was a great opportunity as well. And then again, I think New Haven can be whatever you make of it. And I do think a lot of people kind of kind of get caught up in the Yale bubble and doing all the things that are that are happening here. But that being said, like Yale, um, New Haven has a lot to offer. And I've learned this a lot, especially taking school uh, classes at the School of Forestry that do a lot of emphasis on kind of co community collaborations and learning more about what's actually going to the community and the issues that they care about. So there's a lot of opportunities for meaningful engagement with the community if you're interested in social justice work. Right. And I think that actually transitions. Um, kind of of the cultural part of New Haven um, into the, the job and internship opportunities. Um, now, New Haven is a medium-sized city, which means that um, it's not going to be a huge, huge city like some of the cities we have on the East Coast. But something that makes going to school in a medium-sized city um, quite attractive is the fact that, yes, there's enough kind of new things going on um, in any given day to keep things interesting. However, I feel that the, the, the population size of New Haven is actually small enough that you, as an undergraduate on campus, feel like not only a member of the Yale community, but as a citizen of the Elm City, as we like to call New Haven. So when it comes to these job and internship opportunities, undergrads are actually taking advantage of opportunities to become integral members of the New Haven community. Um, and one of these incredible opportunities is actually a seat on the city council called the Bold, excuse me, the Board of Aldermen. Um, and Michael, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Ah, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, absolutely. One of my friends actually is working with one of the alderwomen who represents. There are actually two uh, districts that that Yale crosses, so uh, many Yaleys can vote for. Uh, their own a, a Yaley who often holds a seat on the board of aldermen. So basically, what that means, I should explain it first, is that is the basically New Haven City Council, and there are a certain number of positions there, and they're reelected. And often, one of them is held by a Yale student, and uh, that has been the case for the past couple of years, which is really fantastic. It means that this student gets to represent Yaleys and also gets to hear the needs of the community and bring those back to his, their constituents and have this dialogue going in a really useful way. Now, a couple of the residential colleges sit outside of that district but also work extremely closely with their, uh, with their cur our current alderwoman. And one of my best friends who lives right on my entryway uh, just got a phone call from one of the alderwoman a couple days ago saying that she actually needed a special assistant and he was the first person she thought of. And he's actually a freshman and he was just really interested in politics. So she called him up and how he's going to be her assistant. It's going to be a lot of work for him next year but it's going to be a really good way for him to engage with the New Haven community. It's going to be a lot of full-time work for him, and he'll actually gain a lot from that. <laughs> so we're really excited to have it. Oh, my gosh. Mitchell, you're here. You made it. Hello. 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 Can you guys hear me? We can yeah, hear you. Can hear awesome. You. Perfect. Perfect. Fantastic. Mitchell, you, yeah, we are just actually talking about um, the kind of job and internship opportunities that New Haven has to offer. Um, and actually... Um, Michael so, so kindly described the Board of Aldermen, kind of how a, student, a Yale student is actually getting involved in the City Council here in New Haven every single year. Um, but maybe something you can, you can discuss a little bit to jump right into things is are, are the other kinds of job and internship opportunities that exist kind of here in New Haven immediately. Um, so specifically in New Haven itself, or that we have access to as Yale students? Um, I think I think the question from Julia was specifically in the city of New Haven itself. Okay, so um, I can definitely attest to this um, a little bit, um, not necessarily from my perspective, but I know um, somebody actually in the Black Men's Union with me, he actually worked for uh, Tony Harp during her campaign season, and literally worked the entire time with her, and was very, very huge on that. And once again, like in terms of like other things you can do that New Haven has to offer, if definitely if you're trying to go that route, there's tons of different things. Also, I would definitely love to harp on the fact that there's tons of service opportunities here as well that are really phenomenal and that are not just necessarily just during the year, but also that you can do afterwards and after things are over. Also, um, you know, just through um, the Yale connection and like the Yale jobs and internship service, um, it's really, really expansive and very helpful in trying to find opportunities. And you know, there are so many that you have available to you that is pretty. It's pretty nice and pretty wonderful in terms of trying to find things to do, whether in New Haven or or throughout throughout the summer. So it's definitely very helpful in terms of internship opportunities. Yeah. What do you, how about you, Michelle? What do you think? 
Let me unmute myself. Okay. Um, one of the cool things is if you guys have experience doing tutoring or doing anything with kids, there are a lot of Yale-sponsored internships where you get to go out into different, um, different like libraries and stuff, and then you can tutor kids and get paid for that as well. And it pays pretty well. I don't know if you guys are no, know, but minimum wage at Yale is twelve twenty-five, and a lot of those um, tutoring jobs are like fourteen to sixteen sixteen dollars an hour, which is a really sweet deal for like hanging out with kids, which of course everybody loves. So it's very rewarding, anyways. Right. Um, I think something to, to understand is that um, Yale, Yale would not exist without New Haven. And we like to think that without Yale, New Haven would be, would be different as well. Um, and because the two communities are so intertwined, you know, we're not separated from downtown New Haven. In fact, Yale campus is in downtown New Haven, as those of you um, visited during Bulldog Days saw for yourselves. Um, so it's really important to, to kind of understand that Yaleys take not only the opportunity to enrich um, their undergraduate experiences by getting involved with New Haven, they take great pride um, in being active, integral members of the New Haven community. Um, people don't just come to Yale for four years to go to Yale. They, throughout their time at Yale, I think they really come to fall in love with New Haven, um, and they realize that even as a 18, 19 year old undergraduate, they have the opportunity to have serious and meaningful impact on the community that surrounds Yale campus. Um, and I know that um, Michelle, Mitchell, and Michael, and of course myself, have all had our own, own ways of connecting with the New Haven community. Um, but the jobs and internships kind of that you would have in the New Haven community almost end up being kind of not just jobs and internships, but actually some of the most important parts of your undergraduate experience, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, so we don't have any new questions here right now, um, but I, as the, as the manager of the Yale Closet 2018 Facebook group, um, have been noticing that actually a bunch of you guys are, are wondering about what it might mean to, to go to school kind of far away from home, right? Um, and why don't we actually go down the line um, and ask, or rather state where we're originally from. So I'm from New Jersey, Michelle. I'm from Los Angeles, California, so quite a ways away. All right, West Coast. Mitchell, how about you? Uh, I am from Dayton, Ohio, um, the wonderful heartland Midwest, so it's pretty awesome and pretty far as well. Cool. And how about you, Michael? Short answer, I grew up in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Long answer, I'm a Navy brat, so I've lived in a couple of important <laughs> cities on either side of the country. Right. So even, even here, you kind of have the Southeast, you the Northeast, California, and the Midwest. Um, and even though we all came from all parts of the country, and there are students here, obviously, that come from all around the world, we all managed to find a home here, you know, away from home. Um, so to kick that discussion off, I think something to understand is that Yale really does become a home away from home. Um, regardless of how long it might take you to travel here, via car, train, plane, um, hopefully you're not going to swim across the Atlantic Ocean if you're joining us from Europe, but however you do get here, um, you know, Yale really becomes a home away from home. And so while the distance might seem like a, a long time for some of you, or a long distance rather for some of you, um, the sense of community here that you find, I really think mitigates that, that fear. So why don't we start with um, Michelle, who joins us all the way from Los Angeles originally. <laughs> How did you feel about going literally, quite literally actually, cross country for, for school? Yeah, well, I kind of cheated a little bit because my sister actually went here and we overlapped for two years, so I had a bit of a built-in family. But that being said, I was really, really close to my family, and like I mentioned before, I grew up in a very Mexican-American um, immigrant community, so it was quite a different thing than from the Northeast Connecticut. So I was a bit, I was a bit nervous about that. And the other additional thing to con consider is weather. Of course, everybody knows that California has absolutely like, the most perfect weather, and it is very unfortunate that I had to leave. But at the same time, the seasons here are beautiful. And I do think the transition was really, really facilitated by the fact that I had the cultural centers. Of course, I had my sister. But I also had my residential college um, deans and masters. And they really took attention to like make sure that I had everything I needed. One of the most helpful things that they did for me when I was first coming in is they noticed in November I was still wearing flip-flops in the dining hall because I just did not have proper shoes. And I was getting my poor feet, feet wet all the time. And Yale, the Yale residential colleges actually have like a small little um, a little endowment, so to say, just for winter clothes from kids from the West Coast because we they know that we don't know how to shop for for a winter clothes. So they, my master actually, uh, my dean actually 
took me to like Burlington Co Factory and taught me what a proper winter jacket was, and then the residential college pa basically paid for all of it. So that was very nice. So it's definitely that sort of transition that helps very early on. And then the other thing to to know, if you guys are interested in the cultural centers, they take really good care to kind of put you in connection with an upperclassman who went through the same experience. So if, you know, if you're not so lucky as me and have an older sibling here, you can kind of have that built-in support network. I also work at La Casa as a peer liaison. And so that essentially means I get assigned to a group of about 20 freshmen and kind of help them make that transition and help them ease because a lot of them come from all over the country and are not used to the Northeast at all. But having somebody to have those kind of honest conversations and be like, it's really hard to leave home, but the sacrifice that you make is, is very worth it because you get to meet people from all different walks of life and really get to meet each other in a different place. Right. Mitchell, how did you feel about um, coming to Connecticut from Ohio? So for me, it was definitely originally, um, it, was, it was a pretty big thing. And I know, you know, I think, you know, if anybody from the Midwest can a lot of times attest, a lot of times there's kind of this thing to like kind of stay in the Midwest for college a lot too. And I know like me personally coming in, like I had already had a lot of places that I really liked. And um, I was relatively, Yale kind of had to catch up for me because, you know, I was very content and, you know, I, I definitely felt like to me, like originally, like the thing that was like the large barrier for me was really the distance and thinking like, well, this is very, very far away. You know, I mean, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing a lot of plane flights and, you know, it's it's probably going to be pretty challenging. You know, it's, you know, the only the time my parents ever drive down here is literally was just to like get my stuff here and, um, you know, kind of pack it up and put it in a storage unit if that's what we're doing. But, you know, aside from that, you know, it was really definitely a really, a really, a, what I thought was going to be a really large change, but it was not really as nearly as large of a change as I think I personally made it out to be. Um, I think one of the amazing things about Yale um, is that in terms of the community here, it is so strong. And it, it really, like, you know, what I thought was going to be, like, a camping trip literally turned out to be home, personally, for me. <laughs> so, you know, I know a lot of people always talk about, oh, when you go away to college, you know, get ready because, you know, you're going to be there for a long time. You're never going to be able to go home. When you're sick and you want to go home to mom and dad, you know, it's not going to be there or something like that. But it's, it's been phenomenal. And, you know, I definitely wouldn't trade the opportunity in the world also because, you know, one of the amazing things about it was this was definitely my first introduction to the Northeast. Um... You know, like, I, 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 I never really had the Northeast kind of cultured lifestyle or any of that stuff. And, like, it's really been, like, a great introduction. And, like, the also the thing that makes it so exciting is that because the people are from so many other places, a lot of us are just all learning this together, and it's extremely fun. And, you know, I, I, I definitely wouldn't trade the opportunity and the experience in the world. And kind of just like what Michelle said as well is, like, you know, you know what you're – you know, like, all the things that you love about where you're from – and you know that you're going to miss a lot of those, but it's amazing how many new things that you love and you see when you're going to different places. And I know personally going to the Northeast has been phenomenal for me for that. So. How about you, Michael? Yeah, so for me, coming from Virginia Beach, Virginia, it's about a 12-hour train ride. The train is even slower than driving. Uh, but one of the cool things about um, being kind of moderately close to Yale was I found that, you know, it actually it wasn't so bad, that I knew that my family was there if I ever needed to come home. If I got homesick, I found I was like, okay, I will at least be able to go home. And then I found out that I actually never wanted to go home, that I found a family here, that I found... Um, uh, just a community here that supported me and felt so close that I could talk to them about anything. Um, and, and it happened so quickly. And, part, and a lot of that is built into Yale. Um, of course, I wanted to go home on my breaks and was really happy to relax and see my families. Uh, my family, but it was it was also nice to come back to my families uh, in my different communities here at Yale. And like I said, part of that is baked into the experience here at Yale. It's part of the residential colleges, and for me, a big part of it was my freshman counselor. Uh, I'm really lucky this year to to kind of pay it back and pay it forward. I am a freshman counselor myself, one of about a hundred uh, what they what my dean calls the uh, successful seniors uh, who are handpicked <laughs> by the master and dean of the college to uh, to help foster the newest class of Yaleys, the fresh and um, we have anywhere from any, like 8 to 15 uh, counselees, so we're about a dozen on average. 
and we basically are there to help make sure that kind of family environment uh, is there for the students from the very first day. So the upperclassmen are there to help move in the students, to get to know your families, and to and help you feel at home on ver on the move-in day. And then from then on, the freshman counselors are there. We're not we're not police. We're not RAs. Our whole job is just to help advise students socially, personally. We also sign off on their schedules, but we're there. We throw especially in TD. This is huge. We throw birthday parties for every single freshman throughout the entire year. We get cake. We do the whole shebang, and it's one of the coolest things. I always I always felt like that was home when people were getting their birthday celebrated, uh, even when you know they were going through you know midterm week or exam week, and this was could have been a really stressful time. It's so nice to know that your family's there to support you and surprise you with a big ice cream cake on your birthday, uh, and and that that's family to me. That's people who look out for you uh, even in the busiest of times. And I think for me. Coming from home, it didn't feel so far because Yale became my new home, and then I could go home on my breaks, and or I could Skype with my family when I wasn't home on breaks, and I still felt like I had that connection to home wherever I was. Like talking with John, John was talking about when we were in our a cappella group, that became another family to me. Whether we were traveling together, all 15 of us in Japan, I still felt like I was home because I had that family. So that was one of the cool things about the communities that Yale creates. Like I said, it's just it's baked into the experience. Right, and I think the point that all four of us are trying to make is that, you know, for some of you that are maybe a bit apprehensive about traveling far from home to go to school, um, you know, that distance, that time of travel is, is not something that changes, you know. It, a student like Michelle, you know, did make the decision to come all the way across the country to, to come to school at Yale. However, um, I think a lot of that nervousness and that apprehension um, stems from the fact that people feel they're giving up a community by leaving home or going to school kind of far away from home. Um, and what we're all saying is that regardless of how far it took us or how long it took us to get to campus um, initially, you know, we all found this incredible sense of community and family here on campus that, you know, made that distance from home not such a negative anymore, you know. Um, it's exciting to be young and kind of be on your own for the first time and, and you have the opportunity to, of course, in the 21st century, Skype with your, your siblings and your parents and your friends. Um, but furthermore, you know, when, when you're not Skyping with them, you feel so welcome and so at home here on campus. So you kind of expand your understanding of what it means to be home or close to home um, into a completely new sense, kind of by being a student here. Um, you know, it's getting late. It is getting late. Um, even though we kind of got a little late start, I think um, what we're going to do is kind of wrap things up. Um, and this being the last um, last kind of virtual student forum in this series, and with May 1st coming up, you know, basically, um, hopefully we found that these have all been helpful for you. Um, but the theme, uh, the title, if you will, of this last one was, so why did you choose Yale, right? Um, and all four of us um, ended up choosing Yale at some point. Um, so why don't we kind of each describe in a nutshell, if you will, obviously there's so many factors that go into this decision, but what made you kind of decide to make your home here for the next four years? Um, Michelle, you want to start? I mute myself. Uh, short answer, I really like bulldogs and I really wanted to be a bulldog for a while. Um, long answer was that, of course, like I said before, you can't make a bad decision, so it kind of comes down to where it feels right. And for me, coming during Bulldog Days and seeing the amount of attention, the amount of time the upperclassmen took out of the days to share their love of Yale with me, really showed me that there was a community and that people were invested in, and I'm sure all the pre know this, invested in getting the pre to become the new members of the community. And I think that was something that was really important to me. And I think in comparison to the other schools, the other school was really kind of on the table for me too that I was really considering was Princeton. At the end of the day, it was like, where am I going to have a lot of resources and where am I going to really have a community? And that felt, for me, that felt like it was Yale. Mm -hmm. How about you, Mitchell? So for me, it was definitely, um, once again, as I kind of alluded to a little bit earlier, it was like a definitely, Yale was like kind of like a come, come from behind type deal for me. I'd already been into schools um, and I had really, really liked my opportunities. And I think the thing that really got me about Yale that um, a lot of other places didn't was like, obviously like one of the things that, you know, I, I, I always like to say is that like, you know, a lot of times if you're if you're getting into Yale, we can definitely assume that, you know, you probably have some phenomenal other choices as well. 
And, you know, those are going to be things that you're going to get at a lot of different places. But for me, what was extremely, extremely important was really the fact that when I got on campus, I really felt like I was going to be a part of something bigger than myself when I got here. And um, Bulldog Days was, was a very interesting time, not only because there are just so many things being thrown at you, and you could see so many of the amazing parts of Yale, but just, just the fact that, like, I think a lot of the vibe and the atmosphere really made me feel like a lot of the people here were ready to welcome me to be a part of something bigger than just myself. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that's really important about college, because not only in college do you find yourself a lot of times, but you also really kind of find the things that make you passionate and how you can give those things to help not only improve yourself, but also augment your community. And I think that that's been really one of the amazing things that I've been able to find at Yale, and I really believe um, kind of in influenced me that Yale was the place that I wanted to be at, because I knew I'd be able to have that. And because I have been able to find that, I really do feel I've made a great choice. And it's really, it was like the, the de facto, like, deciding factor aside from all, the, obviously, the other great phenomenal things about Yale. That really pushed it over the edge for me. How about you, Michael? Yeah, for me, on the micro and, and Michael level, uh, the, what <laughs> I was looking for was a place to be able to, uh, to do the arts. I'm a singer. My, my passion is musical theater and opera, so I wanted a place that I could turn into my own mini conservatory outside of the classroom. So I was able to do that amazingly. I amazed my own self in doing this, or Yale amazed me, really, in what it offered uh, to be able to, to turn itself into a miniature conservatory while I could still pursue a full academic uh, schedule and load, and it was really fantastic to find I could do that. Um, but on the macro level, I think the biggest thing for me was I wanted to find a place where I could learn from everyone else around me. It was, you know, you can go to college uh, to go to the classrooms and learn things, but if you're just there to absorb the information, you could do that from a book, you can do that online, but you, really what you gain from being physically in a college, in a university like Yale, in these beautiful residential college communities is the community of people around you. Literally, these people who all become your teachers, who you get to gain experience from, and they become the witnesses to your education. They really are part of what makes you a Yaley and what gets you uh, to grow over the course of four years. And that kind of expansion, that, sort, that, that kind of wealth of knowledge and emotion and passion uh, was something that I only saw at Yale because people here at Yale, people were really dedicated to sharing that. They weren't just doing it for themselves like John was saying. People are successful here because other people are successful here. We buoy each other up and I saw that here and that's why I wanted to come to Yale. Right. And I think the last thing that I'll leave everyone else with is, um, and this kind of comes from what Dean Quinlan um, so eloquently said during his opening address to the Welcome Showcase at Bulldog Days. You know, I think as a community, um, a, a very supportive community, Yale really prides itself on being a place that transforms this idea of this instead of that into this and that, right? Um, why choose between two when you can have both? <laughs> um, and, and what I mean by that is um, it's very easy at this stage in your lives as, as very motivated and accomplished high school seniors to, to kind of get in the mindset of um, when I go to college, I'm going to have to choose this or that. I'm going to have to sacrifice this because I want to pursue that. Um, and hopefully um, over the course of all the interactions you've had with Yale, um, and particularly during Bulldog Days, is that, you know, Yale is not a place where you have to do that. Um, and that's kind of what I think attracted so many Yaleys to, to come to Yale um, for their four years of college. Yale is a place where it's not only possible to be an engineer as well as a thespian. In fact, it's almost encouraged, you know? Um, this is a community of such diverse people that really knows what it, knows what it means to be multifaceted, to pursue a wide variety of talents. And furthermore, all of these multi-talented, multi-faceted people are pursuing all of those interests because, as a community, Yale really prides itself on allowing you to do that. Um, and now, some people may, may find that they are very, very specialized in one field. And the great part about it is you can do that here as well. Um, so, so my kind of parting words to you all are, obviously, you know, go with your gut. Um, as an admissions officer that had the honor of reading many of your applications, I've, everyone that got admitted to Yale, I think, is a perfect favor here. You know, only you can know for sure whether this is going to be your home for the next four years. But if you really want to be part of a, a warm, friendly, compassionate community um, that understands what it means to 
to really live bold and, and value tradition but be on the cutting edge and, and at the end of the day succeed as Michael said because you're helping other people succeed um, then, then Yale is going to be not the right choice for you just for four years um, but in fact you know for, for the rest of your life this truly is um, a community that you're a part of from the day you matriculate and onward um, and as a reason grad I can, I can say that um, my choice to come to Yale um, is one that I've never regretted and it's one that I'm continually experiencing positive benefits from even as someone that is no longer a, a student here. Um, so hopefully this virtual, this virtual discussion was helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys have any additional questions in these last, last few days, don't leave any of your questions unanswered. Definitely email your admissions officers if you can. Email bulldog at yale.edu. Feel free to email Michelle, Mitchell, myself, or Michael. Um, but again, don't leave any questions unanswered. And that's when you'll know when you, when you have all the information to make a, a good decision. Um, so bye, everyone. Um, and best of luck in the coming days. And regardless of where you end up, fingers crossed that it's Yale, um, we have the utmost of confidence that you will continue to do fantastic things um, for the rest of your lives. So, signing off. Bye. Bye.